Hi friends, welcome to the channel The Nurse. Here we are discussing about AIMS No Set and RRB exam preparation questions. So before going to our, our topic, uh, if you are not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. So we will move to the topic AIMS No Set RRB MCQs 2024 with rationales. First question, which of the following statement about olfactory nerve is not true? It transmits signal related to the sense of smell. It is located in the nasal cavity. It connects directly to the olfactory bulb in the brain. It is, all, it is the only cranial nerve that exits the skull through multiple foramina. Here correct answer is option D. That is it. It is the only cranial nerve that exits the skull through multiple foramina. Instead of that, uh, it is passing only one foramina. Uh, I will explain here. Olfactory nerve is responsible for sense of smell located in the nasal cavity and connects directly to the olfactory bulb in the brain and processing sm uh, smell information. So, olfactory nerve is the first cranial nerve. It passes uh, through the uh, uh, nasal cavity and connects directly into olfactory bulb, bulb in the brain. So, it helps to smell. However, the statement la, option D about multiple foramina is incorrect. The olfactory nerve exits the skull through only a single foramina that is uh, through cribriform uh, crib plate. So, that is about question number one. Second question, what is the primary function of the diaphragm in the respiratory system to filter inhaled air, to warm and humidify inhaled air, to control the rate and depth of breathing, to produce mucus, of, mucus for lubrication. It is easy question. Correct answer is option C, the, to control the rate and depth of the breathing. Diaphragm is a dome shaped muscle that separates the chest cavity from abdominal cavity. So, uh, another function of the diaphragm, diaphragm that is, it separates the thoracic cavity and uh, abdominal cavity. It uh, contracts and relaxes, create a pressure changes in the chest cavity that drive air in and out of the lungs, controlling the rate and depth of the breathing. So, main function is uh, by contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm, it will uh, uh, make a pressure changes in the thoracic cavity and that will lead to the controlling the rate and depth of the breathing. Third question, what is the primary purpose of the coronary artery bypass graft or CABG surgery? To repair damaged heart wall, to bypass narrowed coronary arteries, to implant an artificial heart pump, to treat heart rhythm abnormalities. Correct answer here, to bypass narrowed coronary artery, narrowed or blocked coronary artery. Uh, there will be a bypass connection with a uh, uh, the proximal and distal uh, part of the artery and it will uh, uh, remove the, the passage pass through the narrowed or obstructed coronary artery. CABG surgery aims to bypass narrowed coronary arteries improving blood flow to the heart muscles. It does not directly address valve issues, heart pumps or rhythm problems. So CABG surgery, it is only bypass the a blood flow to the uh, distal part of the coronary arteries and improve the blood flow to the muscles. Which of the following is not a risk factor for needing a heart wall replacement surgery? Congenital heart defects, aging and degeneration of heart walls, uncontrolled high, high blood pressure, advanced lung disease. So you need to find out the uh, which one not causing a risk factor for heart replay, uh, heart wall replacement surgery. So here correct answer is option D, advanced lung disease. It will not directly cause the uh, heart wall replacement, uh, risk factor for heart wall replacement. Advanced lung disease might affect overall health and potentially complicate surgery, but it is not a primary risk factor for needing a heart wall replacement. So that is why that option is correct. The other options are all common reason for heart wall replacement. Example, high blood pressure, example, degenerative changes. These are the 
common risk factor for heart valve replacement. Then fifth question, what is the main function of a pacemaker to regulate blood pressure, to control irregular heartbeats, to widen narrowed arteries, to strengthen the heart muscles? So correct answer is option B, that is to control irregular heartbeats, pacemaker is installed into uh, body. Pacemakers are implanted devices that controlled, control regular heartbeats by sending electrical signal to the heart, ensuring a regular rhythm and adequate blood flow. Uh, there will be a temporary and permanent pacemakers uh, uh, in uh, pacemakers. So, these are all uh, basic information only. So, if you want to know uh, uh, detailed information regarding pacemaker means, please comment below. What is the primary function of a esophago gastro duodenoscopy procedure or EGD procedure to diagnose and treat gallstones, to examine the entire digestive system, to visualize and potentially treat abnormalities in upper GI tract, to assess liver function, correct answer here, to visualize and potentially treat abnormality abnormalities in upper GI tract. So EGD also known as upper endoscopy in a shorter form. Uh, it uses a flexible scope to visualize the esophagus, stomach and duodenum. Commonly EGD is used to visualize esophagus, stomach and duodenum. Duodenum is the first part of small intestine for diagnostic purpose or potentially uh, potential treatment of uh, treatment uh, potential treatment for ulcers inflammation or blockages so egd commonly visualizes esophagus uh, stomach and uh, duodenum and it is usually uh, usually used for diagnosis purpose and treatment purpose it does not directly assess the gallbladder entire digestive system or liver function Seventh question, which of the following statement about sigmoidoscopy is true? It, exa it examines the entire colon and rectum. It requires general anesthesia. It is typically used for sigmoid colon cancer screening. It involves inserting a flexible scope through the mouth. So, correct answer is, it is typically used, to, uh, used for sigmoid colon cancer screening. True about sigmoidoscopy, that is, it is typically used for sigmoid colon cancer staining. <coughs> sigmoidoscopy examines the lower portion of the colon, that is, sigmoid colon and rectum, not the entire colon. <coughs> Sorry, not the entire colon. Sigmoidoscopy usually doesn't require a general anesthesia and is sometimes used for colon cancer screening, depending on the patient risk factors. The scope is inserted through the anus, not through the mouth. Which of the following symptoms is not typically associated with hyperthyroidism? Weight loss despite normal or increased appetite, fatigue and lethargy, dry brittle hair and nails, irregular or heavy menstrual periods. So correct answer is irregular or heavy menstrual period is not associated with hyperthyroidism. All other options are uh, typically seen in hyperthyroidism except irregular or heavy menstrual periods. Hyperthyroidism, an overactive thyroid gland, often leads to weight loss despite increased appetite, fatigue and hair and nail changes. While menstrual irregularities, irregularities can occur, they are not always a prominent symptom. So sometimes uh, menstrual irregularities will be there, but it will not seen always. What is the primary hormone produced by the pancreas that helps regulate blood sugar levels? Adrenaline, insulin, thyroid hormone, parathyroid hormone. Simple question. Oh, correct answer is insulin. The pancreas produces insulin, a crucial hormone for regulating blood sugar levels by promoting its uptake into cells. Same time, one more uh, uh, hormone produced by uh, pancreas. Uh, that has opposite effect raising blood sugar. 
and thyroid and parathyroid hormones are involved in other functions you can comment the uh, their functions thyroid and parathyroid hormones function you can comment below which of the following endocrine disorders is characterized by excessive thirst frequent urination and unexplained weight loss correct answer sorry options pushing syndrome addison's disease diabetes insipidus type 1 diabetes this is also a uh, simple question only correct answer is diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus is characterized by a triad of excessive thirst there will be three main symptoms that is why it is called triad of symptoms so first symptom is excessive thirst frequent urination and weight loss due to an imbalance of water reabsorption in the kidneys Cushing syndrome involves weight gain. Addison disease causes fatigue and a low blood pressure and type 1 diabetes primarily affects blood sugar control. So these are the other options. Cushing syndrome, Addison disease and diabetes, uh, type 1 diabetes. 11th question. What is the main function of the growth hormone produced by the pituitary gland? Regulate metabolism and blood sugar. Stimulate development of bones and muscles. Maintains body temperature and water balance. Control sexual development and reproduction. Correct answer is option B. Stimulate the development of bones and muscles. Growth, growth hormone plays a critical role in promoting bone and muscle growth and development. It doesn't directly regulate metabolism, temperature or reproduction. So main function is uh, promoting bone and muscle growth. Muscle growth and development both. Then 12th question, which statement about osteoporosis, osteoporosis, a condition characterized by weakened bones, is not true? It is more common in women than men. Low levels of estrogen and calcium contribute, contribute to its development. Regular exercise can help, help strengthen bones and prevent osteoporosis. It always leads to fractures and broken bones. Correct answer is option D, that is it is always leads to fractures and broken bones that is the wrong statement it may leads to broke, uh, fractures and broken bones but uh, that is uh, sometimes it will leads or sometimes it will not cause so that statement is wrong osteoporosis is more common in women and low estrogen and calcium are risk factors for osteoporosis regular exercise can help prevent osteoporosis not everyone with osteoporosis experiences fracture, although they are a significant risk. Thirteenth question. What does the acronym, acronym MIX, M-I-C-S, stands for in the context of cardiac surgery? Minimally invasive cardio, cardiothoracic surgery, minimally in, interventional cardiac surgery, minimally incisional cardiac surgery, minimally invasive cardiovascular surgery. Correct answer is minimally invasive cardiovascular surgery. MIX stands for minimally invasive cardiovascular surgery. So I will briefly explain about uh, the procedure. MIX or minimally invasive cardiovascular surgery involves minimal incision and utilize specialized techniques to access and operate on the heart. So that is why it is known as MIX, minimally invasive cardiovascular surgery. Cardiothoracic refers to both heart and chest cavity, but a mix can involve the heart without directly accessing the chest cavity. Interventional implies procedures using catheters rather than surgical tools, which is not always the case in case with mix. Incisional implies any incision, while mix emphasizes minimal incision compared to traditional open heart surgery. Next question, which of the following statement about minimally invasive cardiac surgery is false? Mix uses smaller incision compared to traditional open heart surgery. It may offer faster recovery times and less pain for patients. Mix is always preferred method for all types of heart surgery. It requires specialized surgical tools and techniques. So you need to find out wrong statement here. So correct option here. That is wrong statement here. Mix is always the
the preferred method for all type of heart surgery. While mix offers advantages like smaller incision and faster recovery, it is not always the preferred option for all heart surgeries. Complex procedures might still require traditional open heart surgery. However, mix does utilize specialized tools and techniques. I think it is clear. So mix cannot replace uh, other open heart surgery, but it may have some advantages over open heart surgery. What is the purpose of transcatheter aortic valve replacement or TAVR procedure? To bypass blocked coronary artery, to repair damaged heart wall, to implant a pacemaker for irregular heartbeats, to replace a diseased aorta, the main artery leaving the heart. So, if you are going through the question, you can answer easily. So, correct answer is to repair a damaged heart wall. First option, we, you can easily uh, remove because uh, we in first question itself, we have learned that to bypass blocked coronary artery, we will use CABG surgery. TAVR is a specific procedure for replacing a deceased aortic wall using a catheter based approach, minimally minimizing the need for major incision compared to traditional wall replacement surgery. So it is also a minimal invasive surgery. Sixteenth question, what is the main component of mucus produced in the respiratory system? Carbon dioxide, water, proteins, oxygen. The main component of the mucus that is water. Mucus is a sticky, wet substance produced by the epithelial cells lining the respiratory tract. It, it is mainly composed of water with the proteins, electrolytes and antibodies mixed in. The main function that uh, includes, it helps to trap dust, debris and pathogens inhaled with the air, protecting the lower respiratory tract. Next question. Which of the following respiratory condition is characterized by chronic inflammations of the airways? Pneumonia, tuberculosis, asthma, lung cancer. So correct answer is asthma. Asthma is characterized by chronic inflammation of the airways. Asthma is a chronic inflammation, inflammatory condition affecting the airways leading to airway hyperresponsiveness, bronchoconstrictions that is narrowing of uh, airways and symptoms like wheezing, coughing and shortness of breath. While other options can involve the inflammation, they are not chronic or primarily categorized by it. 18th question, which of the following procedure is not commonly used to image the upper gastrointestinal tract? Upper endoscopy, barium solo, colonoscopy, x-ray of the abdomen. The correct answer is colonoscopy. Upper endoscopy, barium solo and abdominal x-rays are all used to visualize upper GA tract. That is option A, B, D. Colonoscopy is specifically used to examine the large intestine that is colon and rectum, not the upper GA tract. So colonoscopy used to visualize the large intestine or colon. Uh, upper endos endoscopy, barium solo and abdominal x-rays are used to visualize the upper gastrointestinal tract. So that is about today's video. So if you have any doubt, in, doubt means you can ask in comment section. I can uh, uh, clarify your doubts. So please share with your uh, friends and all also please prepare uh, well for upcoming exams. Thank you.